All right, let's uh, look into the volume in the future, individual futures versus continuous futures. To get a better sense of what is what this is doing, let's get the volume history of our crude oil continuous futures and plot it with the individual contract volumes that we plotted earlier. So here we are looking at the volume, uh, daily, daily volume for this period of time, looking at the assets of light sweet crude oil. We store all of these into CL continuous volume and we import pandas, we concatenate this CL consecutive contract volume. Recall earlier, we were looking at six contracts. These are the consecutive contract volume. And now we have just downloaded the CL continuous volume and we have combined them and concatenate them into one pandas data frame so we can actually plot those two together. This is the chart that's being rendered. If you recall, the earlier chart looks something like this. Just remember, this is what this skyline looks like. In essence, what we have is the previous skyline, but the difference now is that the continuous volume or the continuous futures volume uh, is being overlaid on top of the previous skyline of the consecutive futures contract. Uh, the dark or the black dashed line is the continuous futures, and you notice that they actually overlay on top of each other with the exception of this portion here, uh, which is highlighted a little later. So from this plot, we see that the volume for the CL continuous futures is essentially the skyline of the individual contract volumes. Note that there are some points where this looks a little bit off, most notably in the transition from CLK16 to CLM16 between April and May, which is this period here and this exact spot that we were referring to earlier. This is because the rows are currently computed daily using only the previous day's volume to avoid a look ahead bias. We're going to look at pricing now, comparing between the consecutive futures contract pricings against the continuous futures contract pricing. So remember what the consecutive futures contracts is. These are the individual future contracts. We haven't adjusted the price. We haven't made any adjustment at all, whereby the continuous futures is uh, zipped up or um, or rather we zipped up the six consecutive futures contract together relative to the current active futures. Okay, so plotting the pricing data for consecutive contracts over a seven month span is a little bit tr tricky uh, because at the start we have prices for all seven contracts and it's quite hard to visualize. Let's just plot it and you can see that it's rather difficult to actually visualize. Okay, so um, because they all have, they're all concurrently um, running together. Um, so better, to better visualize this, we are going to look at the historical price of the active contract of our CL continuous futures, and we will plot this, and this is what it looks like. It looks very similar. They seem to rhyme. This represents the price of the underlying commodities here on the most actively traded contract, much easier to look at. You might notice that the price at the start of this plot exceeds 60. Okay, notice this part. But when we plot the individual contracts, it barely made it above 50. Why is that? This is because the historical price is getting adjusted for jumps between contracts. So let's just come back up here to compare. These are the so-called individual unadjusted price of the futures contract. And notice that it never went above 60. It just went above 50, but the continuous went above 60. Okay, so the best way to explain this is to plot the price history of the unadjusted continuous futures. So we're gonna uh, now pull up the continuous futures, but the adjustment is none. Okay, whereby the earlier we use MUL. Uh, again, we download the histories and store it into the continuous um, futures but this is uh, unadjusted. And we'll plot that. 
and this is what it looks like. If it's unadjusted, notice that the price never went above 60. Okay, still a little bit hard to tell what's going on. Let's see if we can make it a little bit more obvious by plotting the active contracts separately. So we're going to plot them separately, the contracts itself and the price itself. So these are the unadjusted. Having plot this, now you can actually visualize where the breaks between the so-called futures contracts from month to month are. Uh, the increase in price when jumping from one contract is not to be considered an increase in value in the future. So basically, a jump from here to here is actually not an increase in futures. Instead, it is associated with the carrying cost of the underlying commodity. If you consider this is crude oil, it's rather difficult to store this. There will always be a cost associated with storing crude oil. Hence, there is actually a premium from the current month to the next month. That's the cost of the um, holding the uh, so-called inventory. So let's see what the unadjusted continuous futures is doing. So this is unadjusted history. This is the uh, price. We're going to plot them and see what they look like. So essentially, we are plotting the individual's contracts and we overlay the continuous futures on top of it. Okay, and now let's plot the adjusted continuous futures. And you'll be able to see that the vast difference between the price of the unadjusted versus the adjusted. Simply put, it works like this. Okay, you have the so-called unadjusted. Okay, so this is the most recent. We are here right now. now let's just assume we are here. Uh, this is June 2016. You want to actually extract the continuous futures relative to this point. How do you make the adjustment? Because this is multiplicative. So you compare the price here and price here. You want to match this price to this price. So basically, you need to multiply this whole series by the difference here. Let's just say the difference here is uh, take that price and that price the difference is, let's just say, 5%. You multiply this whole series by 5% and and then you go back one more month of uh, contracts and you take the difference between this and this. OK, maybe this is 10 percent. So you multiply all of this by 10 percent. It's shifted upwards. So and this is what you get in terms of the effect and it concatenate. Basically, it actually magnify as you go further and further back. So far, we haven't talked about the adjustment types, although I have mentioned it a couple of times. The multiplicative adjustment or MUL, um, in this example, the continuous futures is using the MUL adjustments technique. This essentially computes the adjustments as the ratio of new contract price divided by the old contract price whenever the active contract rolls to a new contract. So basically, it's a ratio. Okay, so if and based on this ratio difference, you multiply the uh, historical one and adjust it upwards or downwards accordingly. Whereby the arithmetic adjustment uh, or add, the add technique computes the adjustments as the difference uh, between the new contract price versus the old contract price. And this adjustment is basically arithmetic. So if it's the difference is a dollar, it will adjust the back uh, so-called futures contract by a dollar. Uh, the, the one disadvantage of using arithmetic is that you may get a situation of having negative prices uh, if you go f further back enough. And that becomes a bit of a problem because you have negative um, price or asset price, which is obviously not economically possible. So that's why most people prefer to use the multiplicative adjustment methods.